Welcome to Drinking the Kool-Aid. Welcome. I'm Megan. I'm Hannah. And happy Sunday after St. Patrick's Day. Woo! Hopefully you all survived and are still hungover. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a valid point. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just Frankenstein's birthday. That's on March 15th. Oh, Frankie. Uh, I actually bought early gifts and already gave them to him before his birthday. I mean, you always do that. Yep. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm for sure going to hold on to these. And I got like really cute toys off Etsy. And then the day they got here, I was like, here, I was going to say, yeah, usually <laughs> the day they get here, you're giving them to the cat. So, yeah. Yep. Whoops. So. <laughs> Then I had to buy more. <laughs> oh, my God. So, there you go. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing. Yes. Okay, so today we are covering a case that was sent in by Denise. So, thanks, Denise. Thanks, Denise. Uh, for this one, you guys, this is a heavy case. Boy, all right. So, you're just going to hit us with... Two heavy ones. Cool. Yeah. Denise was like, listen, I want you guys to feel this so hard. Oh. And I did. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. So full disclosure, it's like hate crime, homophobia, transphobia. It's like so much okay. bad negativity. Yeah. And I'm really glad that this was sent in because I had never heard of this case. And it is just so heartbreaking um so <laughs> it's gonna be one of those ones that's hard to hear but needs to be heard yeah got it it's it's really important and it hit me in such an unexpected way okay to the point where i actually then had to get uh like a audiobook that was specifically on understanding you know people that are transgender just because oh, I wanted to be more educated. That's really, really cool. I love that. So, um, and I'll say which one it is, too. I have that in my notes. Okay. Uh, so the audiobook was called Trans Like Me, Conversations for All of Us. And it was really eye-opening, but they talked about real-life experiences and all the ways that, like, the trans community is treated and yeah. talked to. And I just was like, you know what? It should be a gift to learn from others and their experiences. Absolutely. So that's why I wanted to listen to it. And it was so good. It has, like, no relevance to this story, but it was just well, for education. Yeah, it, that doesn't even, yeah, just for educational purposes is amazing. Yeah. 29-year-old Alexa Negron Luciano, also known as Nulisa Luciano Ruiz, Wow, was... that was all really cool. <laughs> it is cool names. Hopefully I said them right. I'm trying. <laughs> well, it sounded cool. Um, But she was a homeless transgender woman who was murdered in the city of Toa Baja. Original reports released by the police and local media misgendered Alexa by saying she was, quote, a man dressed in a black skirt. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you can already see how problematic that is to start. Yeah, we're already starting off not too hot. Mm-hmm. She often walked the streets of Puerto Rico neighborhoods, hunched over, wearing a towel over her hair. She was well-known around town and on social media because people would take photos of her and then comment on them, calling her, like, an oddball or a bag lady. Okay. Alexa was estranged from her family, and neighbors reported suspected abuse during her childhood. One of Alexa's friends told CBS that she carried a mirror with her to check her surroundings and keep oh, herself no. safe. Like, that's how bad oh, things were. No. She actually had to carry a mirror and check around corners that is so sad. for people that might attack her. Most people that met Alexa described her as humble, soft-spoken, polite, and seemed to be suffering from depression. A woman at a McDonald's filed a complaint against Alexa for using the women's bathroom. No! Nah. And this is what all started okay. everything. Okay. This person claimed that Alexa was using a mirror to peep under the stalls, but police say there's absolutely no proof that that ever happened. 
Also, this woman claimed that she wasn't interested in pressing charges as soon as they got there. Like, Eh. it's not a big deal anymore. That's weird. Yeah. Police arrived around 5.15 p.m. to investigate and approached Alexa at a table. Now, there are photos of this encounter that were posted on social media, and people were saying nasty things about Alexa. Well, such so they're as, really just watching her. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. So they, like, posted this, and they were putting, quote, crazy guy dressed as a woman, be careful and watch out. God, I hate that. Yeah. People are so fucking disgusting. Uh, yes. And... Carlos Javier Fret wrote about Alexa on Facebook saying there was a pervert in the woman's bathroom. Oh, my God. And <gasps> this wow. case is so frustrating. All right. We're only like freaking four minutes in and you're already pissing me off. So, yeah, it gained a lot of traction. And then suddenly people are commenting on the post and threatening violence and murder. That's how far this spun out of control. And she's like, why? Mind your own damn business. Right. Yes, please. They were saying they were afraid for their safety and their children's safety, and the post went viral. And less than 12 hours later, Alexa was dead. Holy shit. Yeah. That escalated so fast. Do we see the problem of spreading hate on social media? Now, Carlos has completely distanced himself from this situation and said that he didn't intend to cause harm to Alexa, and he's filed a complaint for online harassment that he's getting himself. We do not ever condone online harassment or bullying, no No. matter what. I don't care how shitty you think a person is or what your fucking opinion is, you're going to... Just keep it to yourself. And also, there's no reason to do it. If it ever pops up on our social media pages, I'm telling you right now, it will be shut down. Yeah. We will like not stand for bullying or harassment. Absolutely not. Now, this is a prime example, though, of what words can do, what spreading hate can do. That night, Alexa was framed in the headlights of a car and shot to death while people laughed at her. And it's like, the craziest, they, they were obviously already watching her, but, like, nobody would have known where she was, you know what I mean, had right. they not spread that everywhere, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yes. A video of the encounter showed up on YouTube, and you can hear people taunting and threatening Alexa, and then there's gunshots. She had been standing beneath an abandoned fruit stand tent as a car was driving by. The men in the video recognized Alexa from social media, so they shouted derogatory comments at her while recording the incident on their phone. The trio left to obtain a paintball gun and then, well, supposedly a paintball gun. Right. And then they returned to the tent. In the video, voices can be heard saying things like, quote, we are going to shoot you up. Let's spin the tires on this motherfucker. It was awful. You bet I'm going to go and shoot him. Yes, they said him. So was, I'm just quoting yep, it. Yep. That's not me. Um, these vile words were followed by at least 10 gunshots. At 3.50 a.m. on February 24th, 2020, police received an anonymous tip that a body was lying on the side of the road about a mile from the McDonald's. They also learned that three teenagers were involved in this crime. Governor Wanda Vasquez described this case as sad, cruel, and insensitive. She said, quote, This is a violence against women, without a doubt. The governor said that this murder would be investigated as a hate crime. I read a New York Times article that says there's still a group of powerful conservative Christians on the island that are extremely vocal about pushing back against moves to be more inclusive. Yep. There was a project to conduct sensitivity training for the police, and it didn't really go anywhere. It was also proposed that they do gender-based curriculum for public schools, and religious leaders put a stop to that. Yeah, okay. So it's very, like... Sorry. I don't know if old school is the right term here, but they definitely are not into change. Right. And opening their minds. 
We'll put it that way. Yeah. I have a lot of words, but also words I shouldn't. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> just gonna right. Hmm, sit here in silence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thomas J. Bryan was a lawyer who previously worked on this issue for years, and he said, quote, The problem in Puerto Rico comes from a group of fundamentalist religious leaders who are against any progressive idea to resolve this kind of situation. This is what brings this intolerance out to the open, this kind of homophobia. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe that's the word I'm looking for, very intolerant. Yes, yes. Now, uh, Bad Bunny is a Puerto Rican singer and rapper who wore a shirt to draw attention on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. The shirt, written in Spanish, read, They killed Alexa, not a man in a skirt. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. Holy shit, that just gave me chills everywhere. Yeah. A man named Nandy Torres actually met Alexa before this all happened, and he got a video of their encounter and I definitely watched it. Okay. At this point, Alexa is lying on a bench and she appears to be terrified that somebody has like just approached her. He says, quote, I would like to know how I can help you if you accept the help. What's going on with you? And Alexa replies, depression. Aww. Nandy says, do you have a family? And Alexa says, no, I don't. They abandoned me. Oh, my God. You're breaking my heart right now. It's just horrible. The entire thing. And I'm very angry at her family. We'll get to that. Okay. Nandy watched all of the hate spreading like wildfire on the Internet on the night of Alexa's murder. He said, quote, I want to believe that all of what has happened to Alexa, my friend, my sister, people change their way of thinking. He was asked during an interview what he learned from Alexa, and he said, The true pain of a human being who I appreciated, she reignited the flame within me, the fire to keep my feet on the ground and keep trying to be a better person. You're killing me over here, dude. <laughs> Denise, this is a crazy case. Let me tell ya. Alexa's death has sparked outrage. And has drawn attention from Democratic presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren, who wrote on Twitter, quote, I'm heartsick for Alexa and her loved ones. This epidemic keeps growing. We must use every tool we have to end it and protect trans women of color. Fuck yes. Yeah. A legislator, uh, Maria Charbonnier, suggested that transgender people should stick to the bathrooms that match their anatomy. Ugh. Ah! <laughs> ah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm putting out all sides here. I know, I know, I know. I know, I I'm know, try, I know. I'm trying to have <laughs> self-control right now. Okay. I'm doing my best, I swear. So during a radio interview, she said, quote, I am a woman. I do not enter men's bathrooms. Not only do I think this is a horrible thing to say, especially when you're in a position of power, but she seems to be corrupt anyways. Right. I looked into her a little bit. Okay. Uh, she was arrested for receiving $100,000 in bribes and kickbacks. Ooh. She had a whole scheme going on and was facing charges for theft, money laundering, and obstruction of justice. Oh, that sounds like a real trustworthy person. Uh-huh. And while she was serving as a representative, she did attempt to ban same-sex marriage. Holy crap. Okay. So. All right. Moving on from her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... I'm just going to throw it out there. Chances are you have been in a bathroom with a transgender person and had no you idea. You had no clue, zero, so, nothing. Mind your business. Um, I, It makes me mad because people aren't crying out about this due to safety reasons. That's not why everyone's so, you know, uppity about it. Yep. This is an issue that might just challenge you to think different. Yep. That's it. Maybe it's not something you were taught growing up, but it just doesn't directly affect you unless you're the one that's transgender. 1,000%. So it, it just makes me wonder, what are we fighting about? <laughs> I just don't get it. I think a lot of us have been saying that for a while now. Okay. So I think, you know, all I can say is, can't we just break the rules and start being kind? 
It would be great. Whoa. <laughs> what an well, idea. you see, that's asking too much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have personally seen men in the women's bathroom, and I'm not even talking about transgender. I have seen men in women's bathrooms, and it makes no difference to me. Unless they get handsy or weird. Right. I don't care. And I'm just going to throw myself right under the bus right now. I was about to for me, too. If I have to pee and the chick's bathroom is in use, I will walk my ass straight to the men's. Yep. We do it seriously more times than I can count, and it's never been an issue. Honest to God, I just did it like two days ago at the gas station. So, (laughs) Yeah. And even... Uh, not even like the locked bathrooms, yeah. like full blown men's, yeah. you know, stalls and stuff. We will go right in. Yeah. I just don't care. I don't either. Again, it's like, I don't care because I'm going in to pee. Yeah. So like, I'll be you're in going for... in to pee. I'm going in to pee. Everybody just fucking pee and leave. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. Mind your business. Yeah. Uh, 2021. Can I just, oh, oh sorry. Sure. Can go I... for it. Keep I going. Just... Literally, and the the excuse that people use, like my kids aren't safe. I'm sorry, you're you're telling me that your kid is safe walking through Walmart, yeah, but they're not safe going into a bathroom with somebody that could possibly be a different gender. Yeah, I just don't get it. It makes zero sense, and it just like I just I can't comprehend that. So you're just gonna be yeah. I mean, it's it's safe if you're out in the public, right? But Oh, my God. If you go in the bathroom and there is somebody that is transgender in there, whoo, better call the police now because, holy shit, there's problems. Well, it's, got, like, it's just so stupid. I got to say, like, we don't have breaking headlines every day saying that a transgender person attacked somebody in a bathroom. No. It's just not no. a thing. Because there's, it's, exactly, it doesn't happen. It's so. just like, it, it is literally like bringing your kid in the bathroom with anybody else. Yeah. It doesn't matter who it is. They could be unsafe with any of those people in there. Mm-hmm. Honest to God, gender is the last thing you should be worrying about. Oh, absolutely. Like, I'm just, yeah. Yeah. <gasps> I know. This shit pisses and me I off. And I personally would think it's more problematic for, like, say, a transgender woman to have to use a man's correct that's bathroom. where i'm saying that's what exactly what i'm saying yeah they're more likely to be 100 you know, and, and, and harassed mm-hmm. and also you know there's so many things that could happen yeah so i, don't like I would rather them i'd rather them feel right safe ours, like yeah yeah <laughs> come on over we're inviting you in. <laughs> i am fine with it yeah so 2021 is the deadliest year on record for transgender people that is not surprising. It's not. It's heartbreaking, though. It is. I hate this because I wanted to look up a lot of statistics because I don't have a ton on Alexa's story because there's just not a lot out there. Right. Advocates have warned that the totals can actually be flawed because transgender murders are often reported inaccurately and the person may be misgendered by the police and media. Yeah. Also. Many hate crimes and murders go unreported. Yep. So. Yep. Don't doubt that. Right. In 2021, it's reported that 375 transgender people were killed. One in four of those were murdered um, in their own homes. Wow. Where you're supposed to be able to feel safe. Right. And 91% of the cases were black women. 81% were under 30 years old. Holy shit. This is bad, people. The suspects that have been charged in Alexa's murder are Anthony Stephen Lobez Ruiz, Jord- uh, Jordani Rafael Laboy Garcia, and Christian Yamari Rivera Otero. The three 18-year-old men were charged under the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act of 2009 for harassing Alexa, and uh, we also did cover James Byrd Jr. on episode 9. Yeah, we did. Just throwing it out there. Since the video was uploaded to social media, it wasn't difficult to figure out who might be involved, but the three suspects told the police they didn't hear a real gun in the video. They were only hearing a paint gun. Somebody else killed Alexa. Oh. 
On the day of the murder, Anthony sent a text expressing concerns that they were all going to be accused of Alexa's murder, and then he deleted the messages. Okay. Yeah. You know, like innocent people do. Yeah, right. The three men were arrested on August 6, 2021, and charged with conspiracy to commit a hate crime against Alexa. Conspiracy. Right. Conspiracy. Uh Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the court documents, prosecutors said the suspects made the victim the, quote, target of their assault because of her actual and perceived gender identity. It was stated in an article by the United States of Department of Justice that if convicted, the defendants face a max sentence of 10 years in prison for the hate crime charge, five years in prison for the conspiracy charge, and a fine up to $250,000 with respect to each charge. Okay, and what about the fact that she's dead? Well, they're, the police are claiming they don't have evidence that right. it wasn't a paint gun. This is just, this is, wow. But okay. It's interesting because I didn't find an article that said she had paintballs on her. Right. So I don't, I don't get it. If convicted, Christian and Anthony also face a max sentence of 20 years in prison and a fine up to 250000 for the obstruction of justice. Uh, so since you can't see the gun in the YouTube video, police say it could be a pellet gun or, you know, the paintball gun that they're claiming or a handgun with a silencer. Okay, so why don't they get their asses out? And do something about it and do a test? Sure. No, I would love that. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. Twelve nine-millimeter bullet casings were found at the scene of the crime, and Alexa had several gunshot wounds. Police believe that the three men that have been charged either committed the murder or know exactly who did. A Puerto Rican transgender woman named Maria told CBS in an interview, quote, We might not be killed, but a lot of us live feeling like we're dead. We don't even have access to identify ourselves. We lose respect from our families, from our friends. We have a hard time going to the bathroom. We have a hard time getting a job. We have a hard time building a life in general. Fucking doing anything. Right. And it just shouldn't be that way. It absolutely should not. Right. I cannot stress this enough. Gender doesn't freaking matter. It's none of your business. And the thing is, like, I have to look at it from, uh, it doesn't matter to me, but I'm sure there are obviously people that it matters to, but at the same time, you don't need to be harassing people. Right. That's what I'm saying. Over that. Just mind so, your business. I guess that's the point I want to get across is just be nice. We don't have to understand everything. Human Rights Campaign released an annual report on the epidemic of anti-transgender violence. The HRC president, Alfonso David, said, quote, While the details of the cases documented in this report differ, the toxic intersection of racism, sexism, transphobia, and easy access to guns conspire to deny so many members of the transgender and gender non-conforming community access to housing, employment, and other necessities to survive and thrive. Which should not even be a thing. Every one of these lives cut tragically short reinforces the urgent need for action on all fronts to end this epidemic from lawmakers and law enforcement to the media and our communities. Alexa's family has not commented on anything. They won't talk about Alexa. That's nice. They won't say who she was, and that's why we know very little about her. Wow. I had to scour every article on the internet, like, searching to find anybody who would say who she was. It just blows my mind that they wouldn't want to get out who she was so that it could get out there more. Yeah. And people could hear the story. Right. I mean, like Alexa said, they abandoned her. Yep. Yep. And that's it. They really did. And it happens even in the end. So often. So, so, so often. And they did have to identify her body, and they had her cremated, and they did not give her a funeral. 
And that was the other reason why I was like, we are covering this case. Okay. Yep. Because this is ridiculous. Breathe in, breathe out. Numerous vigils and commemorations were held in Alexa's honor, and many people from the transgender community showed up to show their support. And I just want to point out that you can build a community, a family of your own. If your family... Family does not have to be blood. If they're not treating you right and accepting you, this proves you can have your own community. Yep. Within a few days of uh, the story of Alexa's murder spreading worldwide, people were just outraged. Activists say she was marginalized in more ways than one. She was black, poor, homeless, and believed to have been living with a mental illness. Activists point out that Alexa's story serves as a reminder of the brutal truth that transphobia, racism, and a misunderstanding of neurodiversity are thriving. Yep. Neurodiversity is typically used in the context of autistic spectrum disorders, and it refers to the idea that neurological differences reflect normal variations in brain development. On the evening of Alexa's murder, an altar was constructed to honor her. A crowd of people gathered and shared their personal stories about the challenges they've faced, and they mourned for Alexa. An image of her half-smiling was placed inside a wreath and illuminated beside a tapestry of candles, flowers, handwritten notes, and a line of handheld mirrors. Okay, that is beautiful. Mm Mm-hmm. Later, a cake was added beneath the wreath, and the crowd sang, Happy birthday, because she was murdered on her 29th birthday. No, Megan! I can't believe you just did that to me. Is that not the worst thing? Uh, uh Uh-uh. Nope. I see the tears trying to come. No, you don't. Okay. (laughs) You see nothing. This one just cuts to the core, man. God, you got me with that, man. Holy crap. Ah, I'm trying to pull it together, guys. (laughs) Okay. Ooh. To honor Alexa and combat the misgendering of trans people in news reports. No, no, you're going to tell me something really beautiful and I'm not ready for it, aren't you? (laughs) Her supporters are using the hashtag uh, Sayamaba, I hope I said that right, um, which means her name was Alexa. Ah! I knew it! Yeah. (laughs) Now, I will tell you, because this one was so heavy, I actually decided to add in some interesting facts at the end. All right, just for the record, if anybody hears me, like, laughing, it's like laughing at myself right now for, like, tearing up during this because I'm, like, I'm a mess. Holy crap, this is a rough one. Yeah. I actually will say I'm kind of glad that it hit you as hard as it hit me because I'm telling you, this story has been so upsetting yeah yeah so no for sure you um you don't take me down on uh, i i usually can make it through but this one this one is rough it sucks i feel very protective in a weird way over communities that uh, of people that you know are are treated yeah. Poorly. No, I absolutely do, too. I always have. And I think that's why this one hits so hard. Yep. And it's just such a huge freaking problem. Right. It's like it could have easily been prevented. <laughs> yeah. Now, okay, so I don't know if you're going to already know this, but I sure didn't. So I always see the argument uh, online that, like, you can't use... They as a gender neutral single singular pronoun, and people think that it's something that was recently just made up, right? Okay. Well, it turns out that the singular they can be found everywhere, even in the 14th century. It's used by several famous writers such as Emily Dickinson, William Shakespeare, William Woodsworth, Charles Dickens, Jane Austen, and many others. Jane Austen uses they in the singular 75 times in Pride and Prejudice. Wow. And that novel's from 1813. 
Using the correct pronouns is a way to show a person that they belong and they're validated. I just don't see why that's so difficult. Right. No, I don't either. I, 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 yeah. Some, okay, again, this has no relevance to our story. It's just a really interesting fact. I am 100% okay with that right now. (laughs) So uh, some animals can change their gender. Oh, I did know that. Okay. Okay, that's what I know. So I'm guessing you know the one about the clownfish. Yep. Uh, But they live in groups where there's a sexually mature male and a female, and the rest are smaller, sexually immature males. If something happens to the female, the male will transform to female and find another male to become her partner. I think that's the coolest thing, honestly. And I, the reason I put this in there, actually, is to prove that, like, we don't know everything, you guys. Yep. <laughs> so um, I also found something. I didn't put it in my notes, but it was about uh, snakes. And basically, there are some snakes that, you know, like the female can't. She doesn't even need the man. Yeah. She gets pregnant all yep. on her own. And I just think that's wild. No, it totally okay. is. <laughs> so, but there, there's like a whole list of other animals that can change genders and do all sorts of things. And I'm like, well, then maybe we don't know everything about humans. Because we definitely <laughs> do not. So, <laughs> um, and that's it. That That's all I have. Um, no, I appreciated that at the end because that, that, that. I, I thought I'd bring us up a little. <laughs> yeah, and I needed that because, woof, you uh, took me straight down with that one. Yeah. That one is, um, yeah. And I think I just want to, like, end it with, you know, at the end of the day, everyone just wants to be loved and accepted. And I, I think that unconditional love should be the norm and not the yes. exception. Yes. You know? And again, just... Mind Just be your nice. business. Just yeah. mind your own business. Worry about you. Nobody else. You don't have to worry about other people that you don't know. Just worry about you. And if you're struggling with um being nice, I would suggest watching Full House. Uh because wow. <laughs> not only are there great lessons in there, but Michelle Tanner is the polite police. Um, and she will teach you. Wowza. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I just needed to laugh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So make sure to follow us on any of your podcast apps. Tell us the stories you want to hear. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Go to our website. Leave us a five star review if you love us. Tell your friends. Tell your cats. Um. Bye. bye.